Montenegro, a tiny country of just 600,000 people nestled in the heart of the Balkans, is blessed by nature and history, having avoided the bitter conflicts of the 90s that raged in Croatia, Bosnia and Kosovo. It may be a small country, but Montenegro certainly does have real aspirations to be a modern European economy. And the evidence for that is everywhere you go in the city. The centre of Montenegro's capital, Podgorica, looks and feels like a city on the cusp of an economic boom. A vast new highway being built by the Chinese will cut journey times through the mountainous north of the country. Flowing through the heart of the capital is the powerful Moratza River. I met with environmental expert Natasha Kovacic, who worries that the building of small dams is a threat to the country's rivers. Almost all rivers in Montenegro are pristine rivers. We are speaking about drinking water, especially at the northern part of Montenegro where we have mountain rivers. And that's how even small dams, they are uh, participating in their uh, destruction really heavily. The country is blessed with the perfect conditions for hydropower, an abundance of fast-flowing rivers, mountain valleys and deep gorges. And since the 60s, they have been used for this purpose. To see Montenegro's hydropower plants in action, I took the old road north, winding through the precipitous Moratza River Canyon. Well, this is one of two massive hydroelectric dams that provide the overwhelming majority of Montenegro's electricity. And the water from the man-made Lake Piva over there falls around 220 meters down where it becomes the River Piva. And for someone who is scared of heights, looking over the edge, Ugh, it's horrible. But in the last decade or so, like many of its Balkan neighbours, Montenegro has sought new ways to improve its green credentials. Dozens of concessions for much smaller hydropower plants have been granted. I came to Krajitska Bare to visit a small community in the northern mountains who, like David against Goliath, fought a grassroots campaign against one of these small hydropower plants. That does taste very good, actually. When construction began here on a new plant last year, local people rallied together in opposition. Protesters took shifts blocking the construction site 24 hours a day for months on end. If this project went ahead, what would happen to this river now? Hmm. This design of hydro plant relies on water from the rivers being diverted into pipes to drive the turbines. The community fears this will mean stretches of their valley will be dried out. The mayor took us to the main construction site, where work has now ground to a halt. In part due to their protests, the government recently ordered the company behind this hydropower plant to put construction on hold. The local people claimed that the company began construction on a river that they didn't have permission to divert. Most of my summers I spent here as a child, you know. I'm, you saw, running by the rivers. All of this nature will be damaged if this project is successful. I put it to one of the protesters that perhaps there was more to it than just preserving nature. Your critics would say that you're standing in the way of progress, that we need to develop some areas of Montenegro. That's our before returning to the capital, I went to see one of these small dams in action. Now I'm actually confronted by it. It's hard to imagine that tiny dams like this one is what's causing all this fuss between the Montenegrin government, local communities, and yes, even the European Union. 
Initially, the vision of the Montenegro government was that the building of small dams would generate power to the benefit of remote communities in the north, whilst at the same time helping the country achieve EU goals for renewable energy. It didn't work out that way. So the question is, how did such small dams at the heart of a green vision of hydropower gain so many opponents in Montenegro? Key to all of this is a prize that Montenegro has aspired to for decades, full EU membership. And central to that ambition is a move away from fossil fuels towards clean, renewable energy sources, a key aim of the EU. Environmental protection is uh, the most complicated chapter and the most expensive chapter in, in the process of uh, on Montenegrin way to the European Union. Daniel Garic is a leading environmental journalist in Montenegro. The European countries are giving up producing this type of energy. They are closing their small hydros. At the same time, the governments all around Western Balkans, all around Poma, Yugoslavia, are planning to build new ones. It's only the job for individuals that are very good connected to some powerful politicians in Montenegro. Danielle had hinted at allegations that come up again and again in this story, that some of the contracts for these small hydro plants had been awarded more on the basis of nepotism than on merit. I arranged a meeting with the State Secretary for Capital Investment, Marco Perunovic, to put this accusation to him. There were a lot of criticisms about the way that some of these contracts for the small dams were awarded. Yeah. There were allegations of nepotism yeah. and, and corruption. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, you accept that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. We had a regime for 30 years breaking more, more or less everything in Montenegro with a lot of corruption, with a lot of bad projects and things like that. If you live somewhere, if you can uh, understand how badly these kind of projects can affect your, 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 your life. So the new, new government wants to follow uh, local population. It was refreshing to hear such a frank admission of past mistakes from a government minister. And these words have been backed up by action. In January this year, the new Montenegrin government stopped the issuing of new licenses for small hydroelectric dams and ordered construction to stop on a number of dams that had already got underway. But is that the end of the story? Now that things have stopped, your protest has been successful. Do you feel that you have won? Absolutely, absolutely. Na našu je stranu i pravo. And do you think it's over? Uh, you know, I don't think it's over. It's over when all of these materials is gone and all of the damage is repaired. We have a new government for uh, six months. They promise that they will do their best to make Montenegro green again. They try to make things different, but it's not so easy. We have uh, beautiful landscapes, we have clean rivers, we have a really good point for developing tourism. Millions of euros have been invested already in this area. Damaging the river is not helping for our slogan Montenegro, wild beauty, and it's not helping the local communities. So, does Montenegro's future lie in embracing its wild beauty at the expense of its plans to build dozens of small dams to extract the power of its waterways? That is the choice it faces on its long quest to become a member of the European Union.